and thank you for joining me for some crafting fun. Tonight I've got a really awesome one where we are going to use paper and we are going to do the paper tearing technique. I've got a few different variations for you and a few different ways to step it up. So for most of my bases I've cut myself a little panel that's about two centimeters smaller than my card base. And then for some of them, I'm also going to go and take a card panel and just cut it in half. So whatever your paper is for your country, um, chop it so you've got a nice border for one or chop it diagonally if you'd like to recreate exactly what I'm doing. Now I've got some scrap copy paper and I'm just going to rip it. I'm going to rip it up and try and make the edges as jaggedy and weird as possible. And for the first technique, this is the base technique, which a lot of you will probably have seen. All we're going to do is use it as a mask. So I've got some removable adhesive, which is what I've got there in that purple reel. And I'm just going to stick it down and kind of cover the very edges of my card base or my card topper. And then I'm going to do some simple, simple ink blending. So I have got natural turquoise, rum raisin, shocking pink, uh, shocking pink and margarita from Lisa Horton Crafts. These inks are very, very similar to Distress Oxide inks. Uh, they blend beautifully and they continue to blend as they dry, which is really nice. So I felt like I had a bit of harsh lines going on, but by the end when it was all dry, it looks gorgeous altogether. So I've just used some dye inks and simply ink blended and that is the first technique that this is the very basic technique where you kind of use your paper as a mask. So I've done it first with some ink blending with just my basic ripped papers. I'm going to use those exact same papers again. So I'm supplying a little bit more removable adhesive on the back. And sometimes this removable adhesive will stick to your cards, but it's okay. It just rubs straight off. It's really nice and easy to work with. I don't know if these are available anymore. If I can find them, I'll link them down below for you. But anything that's a removable adhesive should work or post-it note tape or low tack tape will work as well. And I will get to that in a minute. So for this one, I'm going to go and make sure that I have got all of my spare edges covered up because I'm going to use a background stamp, a nice large background stamp to do my panel instead of ink blending. Exact same concept, you kind of cover the top and the bottom with those jaggedy edges showing and then I'm going to ink up my stamp and using a stamp platform so I could stamp a couple times over because sometimes just near those edges, it can leave a little bit of a gap and a little bit of white space. When you use copy paper though, it's nice and thin, so it always tends to work really well with stamping and you can get right up to that edge. So here you can see me removing the removable adhesive, just rubbing it off. But that is our second technique where you can see that sort of torn paper look, but it's just right on top of your cardstock. It's not dimensional in any way, so you could do a one layered card if you felt like it with your card base. Now another way to achieve the obviously same kind of look is to rip the paper you're going to stick on itself. So again, you're probably getting sick of this rainbow twirl paper because I've used it non-stop, but I love it and I'm just trying to use it all up. I'm going to go and rip myself a little panel, add some adhesive on the back and stick that right down in the middle and trim off the excess. And then I've got the exact same thing as the first two, but we're using actual torn paper. So three different variations on how you can do the same sort of technique and you got that torn edge look. If you enjoy my free content, please would you consider liking, sharing and subscribing to my channel. If you are a subscriber, this is your friendly reminder to please check you're still subscribed. YouTube has been deleting my subscribers and I've had several people now since my last video where I mentioned this tell me they've been unsubscribed from my channel. So please do have a look if you want to be subscribed and hit that bell notification down in the bottom right hand corner, I think, in order to get notifications when I post videos. Now I started creating some cards with my little panels um, and I thought I would share with you that this sort of technique is great for sort of solid image stamps. It works beautifully. You get such a kind of pop uh, right off that card because you've got that beautiful color underneath and it kind of pops up. And now I made an oopsie with this one. So I haven't played with this stamp set too much but the font is very kind of, um, it's not very raised up I guess you could say. So here I push quite firmly and then you can see my massive oopsie. I quit push too hard and I kind of blended my words together and smeared it so I sort of ruined this front but I loved how it was looking so I think I'm going to redo it again and make a finished card out of it. I'll back it with some black cardstock and then I might add some splashes of like silver or gold or just sparkle over the top. So I was totally gutted about mucking that up but I wanted to move on to the next technique and kind of the next stepped up version. Now this is post-it note tape or low tack tape. It's called mint tape from scrapbook.com 
Bomb, this particular one. And it's a nice wide tape, so I really like this one for doing masking on bigger areas. Obviously there's Masking Magic by Gina K that you could use as well. Um, or you could use Post-it Note full size tape, which we cannot get in the UK, but I know in America and Canada you can get it. So you could use that as well. Now, at first I am just ripping it up and lying it down. I do, uh, in a minute, layer it up twice because I found that with the ink blending it was absolutely fine. But with stamping, I did get bleed through. So you do need to double it up if you're going to do stamping or heavy ink blending. And I've done the exact same thing I did the first time. And I went ahead and put down this low tack tape and then ink blended over it. And I love it. I love how this looks. It is so fun and so unique. Now I did it again, but I did it on a triangular strip. And for this one, I decided I would stamp over it. Now again, like I learn as I go sometimes because I'm playing with you while recording. And um, I realized that for this one, again, as I said, I double stamped it and I did get some ink bleeding through. And also I felt like my lines were a bit too close together and the image kind of got a bit lost. And that tip there didn't get stamped, so I just stamped it off the edge and it was absolutely fine. So I'm removing all my little strips and you can see, well, it's kind of hard for you to see, but there is a little bit of bleed through. You can see a little bit of black kind of spotting going on. I felt like the image wasn't popping as much, so I spread it out more so that I could get more of the image showing. And I like that result a lot better. You can kind of see that stamped image a lot more. You still get that torn edged look, but I stepped it up again in a minute where I ink blended and then stamped. And I felt like that was the moneymaker. So again, if you've got papers that you want to use up, you can do the exact same technique with your papers and just tear them and stick them down. And you could stamp over this as well. If your papers are nice and thin, you could stamp over the whole entire thing and have that torn paper look underneath your big image. Now this is where I decided to double up on that low tack tape to avoid any bleed through. So I'm just going to tear myself a strip and then tear another strip roughly the same size and lie straight over the top. And then I'm just going to rip through both layers at the same time. Works just as easy and this is nice and thin so it doesn't uh, affect the stamping at all. I can still stamp right up to the edges. So here I've gone for some ink blending first and done the same thing I've done on the first few cards and then I'm going to ink it up. My, or ink up my stamp sorry and stamp directly over and I love this it is so pretty with that stamp over the top of the ink blending and that sort of torn paper look the possibilities are just endless and if you're using up your uh, designer papers it can be so easy to create some of these backgrounds without having to worry about needing big stamps or having lots of ink colors to do ink blending with so with any of my ones that I did with black stamping over the top, I'm going to layer them all with like a black layer behind it. I feel like that really pulls it in. And for this first card, I thought I would give the edge um, or the background look the same color as this sort of teal color uh, on the front of the card. So I've created a faux colored card base and just done the edges. And I'll share that card with you finished in just a minute. I put it aside to dry because it was quite damp because I added quite a lot of ink to it. For my side panel, I decided to just glue it straight onto a colored card base. This is just a dark navy blue card. And I thought it would look cute on the corner of the card. And then add a little bit of bling sort of down that middle. So I'm gonna add a little strip of glue and then I went and got some holographic speckled cardstock, cut a tiny sliver, and I'm gonna stick that through the middle and trim off the excess. Now I'm jumping ahead to finishing off the cards because I don't wanna make this video too long. And it's fairly obvious what I'm doing with my cards in finishing them. I've either used a big stamp or a big die and finished them off. So with this one, I offset the big die with a white uh, die cut underneath it and kind of just offset that white a little bit so it kind of popped a bit more and used a holographic card and some Nouveau drops. And then the other one I stacked up with a few layers and again some Nouveau drops in clear sparkle to finish it off. Now this one is my favorite of all of them. I backed it on a very thin layer of black. I just stamped my sentiment with black ink and a little sub sentiment, nothing else on it. I love it. And then this one I offset with black card under that gold layer and just stuck it all together. This one here, I will finish another time. I've got the Nouveau drops that I just kind of dragged along that line rather than using um, any holographic card and that will dry clear. So it'll just be a clear line of sparkle. And I think I'll put a sentiment there on the top right hand corner and then like a sub sentiment maybe in one of the gaps. 
But I had lots of fun with this technique and it is so simple and easy to do and it just gives a slightly different look to your card making. So I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you give it a go as well. Thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to seeing you on Saturday for Saturday Night Crafting. Hopefully I will be on time. My birthday is on Friday. So if you don't see one on Saturday, I might have run out of time and just been enjoying time with the kids because they're off this week on holiday as well. And I don't know what we're doing yet for my birthday. So thank you so much for joining me. Hopefully I'll see you on Saturday. But if not, it'll definitely be the week after. Take care. Have a great week. Bye.